But it strikes me that one, one danger, perhaps, that you have is that football is important in your movie. Right. It's one of the escape routes that poor right. Brazilians have to try and make it. Right. Um, and yet football is almost a, a cliché now. When one thinks of Brazil, it's become stereotypical. Right. You could also argue, perhaps, that the wider issue of favela poverty and ways of getting out, including crime, have become stereotypical right. because of the number of movies made about these subjects. Do, do you worry about that? I agree on both points, actually. And what interested me here in Linha de Passe was exactly the reverse angle of what you see. You know, when you open the papers, either in Brazil or in the UK, you have the stories of the Robinhos and Ronaldos, the, the very few uh, young kids coming from Brazil, breaking the line of poverty, who ended up making it. But what about the two million kids who try to make it? Those stories are never told. And that's what interested us here. Um, now jumping to the second part of your question, it is true that the representation of Brazil became biased in cinema due to the number of films that explore the theme of uh, gang warfare in, in our streets. And one film many people will have seen around the world is City of God, yes, which you produced. Yes, and it, that was a very important film because it let us know that, that that phenomenon existed in the heart of our cities and that was not on Brazilian television, that was not in the Brazilian newspapers, nobody knew about that. So, Because to remind Fernando, people who haven't actually seen the movie, it right. basically portrays in the most graphic way gang violence in one right. of Rio's favelas. I mean, right. it, it looks beautiful. It is an amazing film to watch, right. but it is also imbued with, with violence, right. corruption. It's right. a pretty grim and picture. It's, it's a very grim picture, and it's done by a very talented director who was, I think, very faithful to that reality, Fernando Merelis, and it was co-directed by Katia Lund, also a very talented director. But once Fernando did that film, he drifted to other territories and uh, didn't insist on that, on that uh, specific subject matter and then other films came and came and came and what you have is a certain representation of Brazil in which you could think that all the kids in our suburbs carry AK-47s and they do not and this is why we also wanted to do this film is to show that you know the youth can have aspirations uh, in Brazil as they have in any other latitude that it's about reinventing another future it's about refusing what destiny has in line for you and actually reinventing oneself and that is something that we carry in Brazil constantly I mean that desire to reinvent the country I think is is utterly Brazilian it's it's part of our um, I think national desire we're part of this well, and well, Lula is part of that change I think if well, we voted for him is to try to reinvent another country well I'll, we'll talk politics in a second because it, it, it definitely is a part of, of, of your take on Brazil I think but mm -hmm. before we do that I just wonder whether there is a danger that when you say you want to get away from the cliches whether right. it be the violence uh, or carnival or whatever right. the danger is you lose the audience because what you produce is is bleak and you could argue right. it's depressing if right. you're just looking at ordinary people's lives in an ordinary poor suburb right. that that isn't necessarily entertaining. Yeah, well, it depends a lot on the point of view. Like, um, I see Mike Lee films or uh, Ken Loach's films, and I don't, I don't think that they are depressing. Uh, although sometimes what they represent is bleak. Uh, there is such humanity in the characters well, of I'll, those I'll two what, filmmakers what, that I, I completely fall in love with, with, I, I, with those films. I'm so interested in the comparisons you drew, it makes me want to play uh, the second clip that we have Absolutely. of your movie, because you mentioned Mike Lee, for example. He's right. famous for making these sort of interior dramas, you know, literally ki kitchen sink sort of movies, right. where it is people's relationships that really matter. Right. Let's look at another clip where you get to that Absolutely. sort of level. Eu te conheço, Dinho. Eu sei muito bem a trabalheira que você já me deu nessa vida. Eu aceitei Jesus, mãe. Ah, é, Jesus do caralho. Uma desgraceira. Às vezes, se a senhora estivesse procurando Jesus, não estava agora com mais essa barriga. Como é que é? É isso que a senhora ouviu. Repete! Repete! É mais um filho que a gente não sabe nem quem é o pai. Cala a boca! Eu sou pai e mãe de vocês, ouviu? Eu sou pai e mãe de vocês! Eu! So, the slam on the door there shows us what a difficult family situation you outline in that particular movie, Linha de Passi. Right. We've got a woman there, we see her, raising four boys, mm -hmm. trying to keep a family together. Absolutely. And there's a theme here, because other movies, you've also looked at fatherless families, kids right. searching 
for their mm. fathers. Do you think this is perhaps one of Brazil's biggest problems? Well, it's what defines us in a way. You know, 30% of the Brazilian families are fatherless families. So 30%? Fa yes, 30%. Almost uh, one in three? Almost one in three, yeah. And that is a statistic that was published by a newspaper recently in Brazil. And um, I think that the reasons for that are kind of buried in our history. Um, country that has been colonized, country who colonized us, went away with, um, you know, all the goods they could actually take back to Europe. The absence of the founding father is something that has characterized us since the very beginning. And in the film, you see that there's the tendency for that situation to happen in other generations because it's not only this mother uh, who doesn't have a husband to to cope with or, or to help her it's fact, also one of her the sons, sons one of her sons is also in the same the situation child. yeah so it's it, it, it on the one hand this is um, a kind of a, a tragedy that affects us but on the other hand it 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 creates a need for brotherhood to and the film is about the collective necessity that we have to share and help each other. But when mm. you say that, Walter Sellers, you sound a little bit like, if I may say so, an upper middle class liberal mm -hmm. preaching to the poor. Because what do you really know mm. about the sorts of lives we see portrayed in your movies? Because in the end, right. you're the son of a diplomat, you're from a wealthy family, you've right. traveled around the world. I used the word authentic at the beginning. Are you sure you really can be well, authentic? I do investigate a lot, make um, years of research. This project took five years to be made. It's not that you invent something out of the blue and then you just do these stories. Each, each of these stories of these four kids are drawn either from documentaries that we have made, that my brother has directed, or from stories that I read in newspapers. You see, so we, we start from a very very uh, precise data that we then blend into um, a, a one story that tries to make sense. And the one thing I try not to do is to judge those characters. I'm completely uh, sympathetic to them and I try to understand their motives. And if you take a look at, for instance, uh, the history of cinema, it's full of um, examples of people coming from one class who were able to look at another class and it would be tragic if you would only talk to people from your own class and wouldn't um, be interested in in the other ones I'm much more interested by the people I don't know or the territories I haven't been in than by those that I ha that I, I have a, a, a deep knowledge of 